So guys, I'm here in our mini apiary. I don't know if you can call it that. You can see that we set up quite a number of beehives in here. You can see them in the background. Quite a number of beehives. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys. I won't move so close because we have bees in here. And I'm not dressed up covered. But you can see that we have a beehive over here. It's a basic beehive. I think it's called Kenya Top Bar Beehive. Very easy to make. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this beehive it's quite easy to make and if you're in a place that's a bit foresty you can even attract the bees naturally no need to buy any bees or anything like that because we haven't bought any of the bees in here they just came in by their own I, i've made a video about how to attract bees before i leave it on a link in the channel right here but if you haven't watched it check it out otherwise let me go and show you guys how to make this exact beehive we haven't started collecting any honey because it's been just a few maybe two three weeks that you know these hives have been in here so probably sometime later on we'll be getting some honey but let me show you guys how we did it first you'll need timber any kind of timber really will do it just needs to be wide enough and not super thick because you don't want to waste your material you'll then need to use a square like you can see we are using here because you want to maintain your angles at 90 degrees so what we are doing here is that we need to cut off one of the ends of the timber because the end that we are cutting off was not shaped nicely. So we just need to cut off using a saw. Then you're going to measure the length that you need for your hive. It can really be any length. You just need a measuring tape, depending on how big you want it. For us, we took 80 centimeters. So that's going to be the length of our hive. So that's for the lower side and the two long sides of the hive. So you measure them and cut them off with a machine or whatever you have that can help you to cut. Then you need to smoothen the timber. It doesn't need to be super smooth, but if it's very, very rough, it may not be attractive enough for the bees to make honey or to settle inside. So that's why you're seeing us using this machine to try to smoothen out, you know, the timber just a little bit. Uh, that we're going to do for the inside part of the hive. The outside, not so important, just the inside. Then now the next part here is that we're going to get the ends, you know, the ends at the width of the hive. Uh, if you notice, the hive narrows down from top to bottom. So you need to cut your timber. The angles don't really matter. You just need to cut your timber in such a way that it narrows towards the bottom. So for us at the bottom, we chose 8 inches. And then at the top, we chose 13.5 inches. So that's going to be the width at the top, 13.5 and 8 at the bottom. And yeah, just use the machine again to cut. At this point, the machine jam on us. I, I don't know. The machine jam on us, so we had to go manual, you know, use a hand saw. And it worked well, it worked well. So now you'll hit the sides on the end panels, as you can see we are doing here. Yeah, the wood wasn't the very best kind of timber, so you can see it was splitting at some point. But yeah, those are the things that we have to go through. Yeah. Now you can see that the whole shop is almost done. We have the side panels. We haven't put the bottom panel, but we have the side panels. And you can see the end panels. So right here, what we're doing is using a chisel, some kind of chisel. We want to cut the entrance for the bees. Different kinds of entrances can be made. You can just drill holes through, or you can make an end just like this. You know, you cut out a curve. So for us, we chose to cut out with a curve. So then the next thing to do was to hit in the bottom panel, as you can see. It's very important that it fits perfectly because if it doesn't fit, then you leave spaces for the bees to escape through. So we had to make a few small adjustments as you can see over here to make sure that it fits perfectly inside and there is no space left for the bees to escape so now it did fit perfectly um, and then we had to hammer it in for us since we don't have too many screws available we always had to keep using nails and hammers here but 
yeah, these guys and I have become experts at using nails and hammers, so that's not a problem. And then after that, the next thing to do was to hammer in the side panels together with the bottom panel because we just put the bottom panel to make sure that we don't have any spaces. Now next up were the top bars. I think that's what defines the name, Kenya top bar. These top bars are where the bees will put their combs. You can see that the piece of timber, a small thin long piece of timber has a groove put inside. These guys used a machine to put the groove inside, but you can use whatever you can use to put the groove inside. So then you need to measure the width of the hive. And then we measured it again over here on this piece of timber and then we had to cut them into very many of these pieces because they're going to run along the entire length. So we had this machine to help us cut and make the work easier and quicker. This guy who was cutting the timber, I just can't be like him. I can't put my hands that close to a power machine. That's so close. You see how his hand is moving? No, I just would never do that. But I told them quite a number of times, they didn't seem to care. So we let them work. Then we had to cut out small ends on these pieces of bars to make sure that the bar can sit properly on top of the hive. At first we were using a hand saw, but then one of them discovered an engineer's way that can use, you know, a power machine. So you can see how exactly it fits onto the top. So we had to do that for all the pieces of timber. The exact width of the pieces of timber doesn't need to be very specific. Anything approximate to what you see will work. You just need to use very many of them. So after they were done, we had to fit them in. All of them, one by one. As you can see, they all fit very perfectly. So next step was making the cover. The cover is very important in that it protects the bees from outside, you know, things. Like excessive heat, in case the rain falls, you don't want the rain pouring inside the hive. So you just needed to make a frame. As you guys can see, we made a frame that just fits the top. You know, it should just be able to cover the top. And then we had to use plywood that you can see us cutting over here with a handsaw. Meanwhile, the guy making the hairs for me is a really good guy. He's called Mr. Jemba. This time I leave his number in the description of this video. That way you guys can give him a call in case you need to hire him. But as you can see, we put the plywood to cover the top. And then we used a thin sheet of metal. I don't know which metal it is, you know, to cover the top because the plywood gets messed. So after a short time, if it was just rain, it would mess it up. So we need the metal to make sure that everything is preserved. Fit the metal nicely, hammer it in using a few nails. And just like that, the top cover will be done. And then don't forget to bend the nails that you've taken through because they'll pierce you when you're handling the cover. You need to bend them, keep them away from possibly harming you or harming someone else. So next up is dividing the beehive into the queen's chamber and the honey chamber. The queen's chamber is where the queen stays. The honey chamber is where the bees, you know, make the honey. So we just use these small pieces of wood and put them onto the sides because they're going to be supporting a small tiny net. So as you can see, we are hammering them in right here on the two bottom sides and the very bottom. And then you're going to hit the middle bar, the one right at the top through, to make sure that that doesn't move at all. It needs to be inseparable. It shouldn't move away. The next step, you see this thin mesh. We're going to hit it on this division. That thin mesh prevents the queen from moving from the queen's chamber into the honey chamber. And that's very important because uh, you don't want the queen moving and laying their eggs in the honey chambers. You want them to lay their eggs in the queen's chamber. So the bees only will go to make honey from the honey chamber. And when you come to collect the honey, you'll only get it from the honey chamber and not the queen's chamber. The honey that will be in the queen's chamber will be for the bees and the bees babies. I don't know what they are called. So we used thumb pins to hit the mesh through. You might wonder how the queen manages to stay the side. It's because the queen is really big compared to the rest of the bees. So while the rest of the bees, the workers, the ones that make the honey can go through that mesh, the queen can't. At least the queen is still young. But when they are grown up, they can't. So because they are big enough. So they'll stay on this other side, which is the queen's chamber. 
And just like that, our beehive is done. You just cover it up and you've got it done. Now you're ready to go hang it up somewhere on a tree. You know, just put the cover, spray your attractant at the entrance, right at the entrance, and then go and hang it up somewhere in a tree. And guys, yeah, that's how you make a beehive ready for use quickly like that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, smash that notification bell. That beehive is now ready to be put up in the trees with a small attractant from a tree, a leaf called Chisubi. A leaf we call Chisubi over here. So I'm, I'm not sure of the name, I'm going to look up the name. So you get that leaf, spray it on the entrance of the hive and then put it somewhere in a tree, you know, somewhere up around these areas and in a few days or a few weeks, if there are bees that pass around the area, you're going to have bees. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Lots of love. Bye-bye.